This is Houston Newsmakers Extra. I've been talking with Congressman Wesley Hunt, representative of the 38th Congressional District, newly formed 38th Congressional District. Thank you for being a part of the program of today. Of we were leaving off on the program talking about the 2024 mm -hmm. election. You talked about you've already come out in favor of uh, former President Trump. Um, he's got a lot of baggage right now, yeah. does he not? There's a lot of things out there right now. January 6th, one of them. Mm -hmm is certainly uh, something that's in the eyes of people. Why do you think that he is electable, even with all that people have been able to see that he may have been responsible for in his previous administration? Oh, let me tell you a little bit about the numbers even in my district. I mean, in my district, Congressional District, District 38, uh, President Trump would have won this district by about 23 points. Mm -hmm. We ended up winning by 28 points. I actually would have outperformed President Trump by six points in this district. It's an overwhelmingly supportive district of President Trump, and it's an overwhelmingly Republican district. But let me tell you something, sir. As a person that believes in our sovereignty and our national security, the idea of us having Chinese spy balloons and us shooting down UFOs every single day like hotcakes is something that's terrifying to someone like me. We in this country have lost all respect, and we have got to get it back. It's going to take strong leadership to be able to do that. And I'm going to tell you, since, you know, George W. Bush and with President Obama and with President Trump, especially President Trump, what's happening in the world on a national scale, it wasn't happening then because we were respected. Mm. And what I want to get back to is not talking about, you know, January 6th and, and not talking about baggage and mean tweets. I want my family to be safe. And I want to have a pragmatic conversation about how we're going to do that. All right, so, I, you know, how can you say all of that you just said and ignore what happened on January 6th? You just, you just glossed over that. You said, just yeah. don't, don't think about January 6th. How can you not think about January 6th? Did you watch the select committee? Did you watch all of the Republicans who came out and said mm -hmm. under oath the kinds of things that they believe that former president was responsible for on January 6th, and you still say, yeah, it doesn't matter. Just keep pushing forward. You know forward. what? I've, I've been running for Congress for the last four years. I ran a couple of years ago and lost in 2020, came back running, running, running again in this new district. Do you know how many times with me being on the campaign trail that the people of the Congressional District 38 asked me about January 6th? Never. Mm -hmm. I have not gotten one question on the campaign trail about it because people are trying to decide whether or not I can put gas in my car or take my kid to school. Mm -hmm. People look at their 401ks diminish. And I tell you something, when you're in that position, the least of your worries is that you just want to be able to live in the America that we had a couple of years ago without worrying about that kind of economic stress. So dollars and cents trumps um, the, 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 the correctness of, uh, of our Constitution and the, the opportunity to try to maybe change the way our Constitution is supposed to run. I mean, that's what happened in the last, the Electoral College, kind of making sure. Let's kind of go around that. We heard the video, we heard the audio tapes of the conversation with uh, the, the Georgia Secretary of State about trying to find votes, to, you know, to help me win, that sort of thing. None of that matters except maybe making sure that our 401ks are okay. Well, it's not that none of that matters. It's just that that's what we, it sounds like, though. No, w yeah. when you when you try to when you try to prioritize what actually matters to the individual voter in this in this country, mm -hmm. there's a reason why in the Republican primary Trump is up today right. by about 20 points. Right. It's not that it doesn't matter. Right. What I am talking about is, is is priorities. And when you're looking at what we've seen over the uh, the past few years from the failed policies of, of of Joe Biden and of Kamala Harris. People are actually really frustrated. So if you look at the numbers that you, you just talked about mm -hmm. in terms of how far uh, the former president is up in the Republican Party. Yeah, primary. I said primary. Primary. Yeah. primary. Um, across the board, the country, is there a little bit of fatigue, you think, about what's happened in the last four years? Watch, in terms of what was going on, there was always something coming up, whether it be the taxes, whether it be the S-hole countries, or whether it had to be hand in hand with uh, North Korea's president. All those things were kind of fatiguing for a lot of people. Yes. I've seen that, and you've seen that over the last couple of years as well. I've dubbed myself being the energy congressman of the world because the entire energy corridor is in my district. Mm. The real fatigue comes from people paying four, five, and six dollars a gallon for gas, and they have to decide rather or not they're gonna drive their work or drive to work or take their kids to school. And then every time we have an election, we drain our strategic petroleum mm -hmm. reserves to try to bring prices down, and then now we're seeing it go back up again. Uh, That's where the real fatigue is. Are you happy at all with the way the economy continues to run? There are some things with the economy. The economy, the job, there's this balance. Inflation, yeah. jobs, there's all, there's some balance. There's some yeah. good, there's some not so good. What do you think is the least 
uh, is the most important right now as far as the jobs and the economy and the inflation is concerned. It's the greatest existential threat uh, to our country is two things. It's China and it's our debt. We are $31 trillion in debt and climbing. We passed $1.2 trillion of COVID relief the first time, another $1.5 trillion, and another $1.7 trillion omnibus bill that passed two months ago. And then you wonder why we're in a hyperinflative state. Right. That, to me, is what we have got to tackle yesterday. Yeah, and there are a lot of people who say, yeah, well, we probably put too much money into the system yeah. at this point. But yeah, at least the economy is working. I mean, the jobs numbers are better because it could be a lot worse. But I hear your point. Yeah. By the way, the Chinese balloons, now we know that there were several who flew over during the previous administration as well who didn't even know about it, apparently. But so now we know that there's an issue Rel- out there. Yeah, 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 relatively. So now we're readjusting our radars to be able to catch balloons yeah. <laughs> as opposed to whatever. But that's part of your expertise, too. You know about that. I do know a lot about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do know a lot about that, especially over the course of the, of the past few years. And I don't even want to, it, it happened during the Trump administration. Yeah, I, honestly, that's one of the most respected years abroad that we've ever seen. We literally had world peace for four years. We passed the Abraham Accords during the Trump administration. Um, Iran was out on the path to having a nuclear weapon. Uh, we were respected during that time. Same thing during the Obama administration, to be honest with you. There was never real talk of China being that kind of a threat because he was respected. During the Bush administration, especially after 9-11, we were pretty well respected. And then now you're looking at the world with Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping and others right now that feel like they can probe our nation because they sense weakness. This is the weakest we've seen this country in my lifetime. And at some point, we have to reverse this. Well, I saw so little pushback against Vladimir Putin by the former president, by Trump. No pushback at all against yeah. this. So I wonder how that all came about. And we have to remember that Ukraine was a part of the process of the first impeachment. So there's a lot going on with that. The history is going to tell us how that all works itself out yeah. in some one time. Vladimir Putin, former KGB, he has been, oh, a, he knows he's been a thug on. for a very long yeah. time. Yeah. He has invaded or annexed a country under every single president since 2000, with the exception of one. Mm-hmm. President Trump, Mm -hmm. he did not budge. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why he didn't budge. And he literally wanted to wait this out to see what happened. And then when he saw this weakness, that's when he pounced on it with the Ukraine So here's the deal. I know there's a lot of things that you're trying to solve. But before you get out of here, I have something I want to just show you here. (laughs) I mean, this this is great. We're doing this. I know things are important. There are priorities. There are priorities. But there are real priorities. Oh, so, come on. Here's the deal. deal. <laughs> so you got a little bit at home now. A Thank little, you a so boy, much. A little boy right now to help balance oh, out those girls. Oh, wow. We got a lot going on for you. So just so you know, there's something there. And you got girls, but you got boys now. You got some of that. And you got this. Oh, else down my the bottom goodness. Well. It may be a little while before he grows into that because I know he's a little guy right now. But uh, just know that. For me to you and Emily, uh, hopefully you'll be able to enjoy that. And this is for the eating and the drooling. So, Well, I can't thank you enough. And this is why I do what I do every day. We, might, we may not always agree on everything, but I can tell you that we are working hard to make sure that we do the biddings of this country and we get to a good place. And as long as we can have dialogue like this today, yeah. we're going to actually make some progress in this country. And I can't thank you enough. Well, I, I, I uh, cherish the fact that I'm a hardcore independent and I, I tick off both sides equally. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed and to. It's I your enjoy, job. I enjoy it. Thank you, sir. Congratulations Thank, as well. God bless you. Thank you so much for the very kind You're gift. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Hey, Houston Newsmakers Extra, share this with everybody you know.